Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson's AppQ, and in this tutorial we are going to use SPSS to evaluate two assumptions, the assumption of univariate normality and the assumption of no extreme outliers. Remember, in order for the MANOVA to be robust, we need to investigate whether each dependent variable, here you can see the learning community and connectedness are our dependent variables, we need to investigate whether or not these dependent variables are normally distributed, and we also need to make sure that there are no univariate outliers, more specifically extreme outliers, for the independent variable, each level of the independent variable. Remember, the two levels are, or two groups, are online and traditional. As these are two separate assumptions, we will examine them using two different analyses. However, I will note that we can, test, uh, we can test them or assess them simultaneously in SPSS. You'll see what I mean in a moment. For each dependent variable, we need to create box plots to ensure that there are no univariate outliers. And for the univariate normality assumption, we need to check whether or not there's univariate normality by either using histograms or normality tests, Shapiro-Wilkes or Kilmogornoff-Smirnoff test. Here we're going to use the normality test, specifically Shapiro-Wilkes rather than Kilmogornoff-Smirnoff, since each of our groups, both the online group and the traditional group, have under 50 cases. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, I have SPSS open. In order to begin a uh, or to begin or produce the box plots and the normality test, we need to click Analyze, we go to Descriptive Statistics, and we are going to click Explore. Here you can see we are presented with the Explore dialog box. Now we are going to click the dependent variables, learning community, and connectedness, and then use the arrow to move them into the dependent list box. So here you can see I clicked on learning community. I'm going to use the arrow and move it over here to the dependent list box. Then I'm going to do the same with connectedness. I click on connectedness. I move it over to the dependent list box. We also need to move the independent variable type of program here into the factor list box by clicking on it as I just did and then clicking on this middle arrow button and moving it over to, fa to the factor list. This setup tells SPSS to perform all the procedures we select on the dependent variables for each of our categories of our independent variable or disaggregated by the independent variable. Now we're going to click on the plots button and we are presented here with the explore plots dialog box. In the box plot area, which is right here, we are going to change the option from the default option dependent together, or we're going to change it from the default to the dependence together. Selecting the dependence together option will mean that the box plot for each dependent variable will be presented on one overall box plot. And this is really suitable for our example here where the values on the two dependent variables are similar or on the same scale, and there are only two dependent variables. If we had dependent variables with very different values or we had a lot of dependent variables, then it may be best to go ahead and keep the default factor levels together selected, as this will produce one box plot for each of the dependent variables. Again, once we produce the output, you'll see this. Next, we're going to deselect the stem leaf plot. We don't need a stem leaf plot here. Um, we are instead going to select or click on the normality plots with test. Also note, we could produce histograms here if we wanted. Next, I'm going to click the continue button. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Here you can see SPSS is producing output. Now, to determine whether there are, if there are any outliers in the data, we need to look at the box plots in the output, the box plots for each of the dependent variables. So I'm going to scroll down and find the box plots for each of our dependent variables. 
here you can see we have the box plots. And remember, we chose to have them put all together. And so you, here you can see that they're put together in one box. Now, any data point that is more than 1.5 box lengths from the box, it's classified by SPSS as an outlier. These data points are illustrated usually by circular dots and they're labeled with the case number. If any of the data uh, plots are more than three box lengths away from the edge of the box, they're classified as extreme outliers. And these are illustrated by SPSS as asterisks uh, with the, again, with the case numbers labeled. So here you can see we have no asterisks, we have no circular spots. Therefore, we can conclude that we have no extreme outliers. So the assumption of no extreme outliers is tenable in this case. Now we're going to scroll back up and we are going to um, assess and talk about normality. Now, um, here what we're looking for, scrolling down, is the test of normality box. Remember, the Shapiro-Wilkes is recommended when we have a smaller sample size under 50 and are not confident um, in visually interpreting the normal QQ plots. So here we're going to look at the results of the Shapiro-Wilkes test as presented in the test of normality table. You can see here that a Shapiro-Wilkes test has been run for each level of the independent variable type of program for each of our dependent variables, both community learning and connectedness. As there are two groups and two independent variables in this example, we can see that there are multiple rows. Here, what we're most concerned about in the Shapiro-Wilkes section is the significance column. We want to know the significance value for each test at each level of the independent variable for each dependent variable. For the normality test, remember, non-significant results, that is a significance level of more than 0.05 indicates tenability of the assumption. Normality can be assumed. If, however, the assumption of normality has been violated, the significance value will be less than 0.05 and we'll need to make the conclusion that the assumption of normality is not tenable. Now, let's go ahead and take a moment and look at the significance value of Shapiro-Wilkes for each of our dependent variables disaggregated by our independent variable, or for um, look at each dependent variable by group. Here we can see in the significance column in the first row that the online group in their community learning scores, they are not normally distributed because the value, the significance value is 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.005. In fact, if we look at community learning for the traditional group, and then we also look at connectedness for the online and traditional group, what do you note? You note that all the significance values are less than 0 0.05. So based on what I just said, what does that mean? That means that unfortunately, normality cannot be assumed. However, remember that the MANOVA is really reasonably robust um, to modest violations of normality um, when the sample size is at least 20 in each cell, according to Tabachnik and Fidel. So the exception, uh, and however, the only exception to this is when normality is affected by outliers, and we already determined that this isn't an issue. So when we go to write our report, we are going to say that the assumption of no extreme outliers is tenable. However, the assumption of univariate normality for each dependent variable at each level of our independent variable or within each group of our independent variable is not tenable.